everybody. Today we're going to look at 5.5, which is the area bounded by two graphs. So we are still looking at our integrals, so this is a bit more practice with definite integrals. But we're just adding one more layer of difficulty onto it. But once you see how this works, it's really not that bad. Um, and then it has its useful word problem in a business setting, and that's the reason why it's important that we, that we do this before we finish off the class. Okay, so I'm going to draw you a picture first before we get into this. So let's say that I gave you a graph, and let's say there were two functions on this graph. We've got f of x there, and then we've got g of x here. And this time, I'm not interested in the entire area all the way to the x-axis. What I'm interested in is the area between the two functions. So I want the area in between f of x and g of x. And again, we could say that this is from, we can call this a and this is out to b, just, just to give it some, some numbers there. Now, the question is, how are we going to do this? If a regular integral goes down to the x-axis, then this isn't going to work. So what I want us to think about is looking at this visually in a different way. Could we say, and now you gotta bear with me, I'm trying to draw the same graph, but you just have to go with it. Could we start with this guy? So using a definite integral, could we find the area underneath f of x, all the way to the x-axis. Okay, and that's what we were doing in the last section, so yes, we can. But that's not what we want. So then, let me put something else here. Apologize for squeezing it in there, but let's say we got from a to b, and here, We write this. Now, this part is the part we don't want over here, isn't it? We want the part in between them. So if we were to take the whole big piece, the whole piece, if we were to take away what we don't want, would that leave us with what we do want? Hopefully the answer you're saying is yes. And that's the idea here is that when we're bounded by two graphs, what we're gonna do is a subtraction problem. So the way this looks visually here translates into integrals that look like this. The integral from a to b of f of x dx minus the integral from a to b of g of x dx. Now, because of our basic uh, derivative and antiderivative rules, we know that as long as these guys have the same endpoints, everything is the same, we can combine this as a single integral and just write it as the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So essentially what that means is that when you are given uh, two graphs and the area bounded between them, it's basically a subtraction problem. So the first thing you have to do is to decide how we're going to subtract the functions and then we're back to calculus again. So there is a subtraction problem going on here. Okay, so let's see, uh oh, I forgot the black doesn't erase very easily. So let's see what an example looks like here. Here's my notes. Notes. They're here somewhere. Yeah. So let's say that f of x is the function 2x minus 1, and g of x is the function x squared minus 4. And we want, we want the area between from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So we've got two functions, 
We know the endpoints on the functions. So we're going to set up a subtraction problem. Now, the only thing that I want you to be aware of is that just because these two functions come f of x minus, or g of x does not mean it's minus g of x. You have to actually check to make sure which one is above and which one is below. So just a little sketch, okay, nothing, nothing fancy here. That guy is a line with a y-intercept of negative one. So looking something like that. That guy is a parabola that has its vertex down four, doesn't it? So it's looking something like that. So the f of x function truly is above the g of x function. Do we agree f of x is higher than g of x? So when we put this into the integral, it is gonna be a subtraction with this guy minus that guy. Okay? And that's, we visually see that right there. Now, what we are looking at then is, actually, let me just erase this. It's hard when you only have the one board. So we are looking at the integral from one to two, and we're gonna take two x minus one, and we're gonna subtract x squared minus four. It's left with the dx. Now, why did I put the x squared minus four in parentheses? Because biggest mistake that happens here is, what do we need to do? We need to figure, to distribute in that negative sign. So when we rewrite this, we will have two x minus x squared, and then this is a minus one plus four, which will put us at three dx. So do not forget to distribute in that negative sign. You must do that. Okay, now we're simply left with a polynomial that we can take the antiderivative of, and then we're just going to have to plug in some endpoints here. No substitution, nothing tricky here. Just a nice antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 2x would be x squared minus, this guy is going to be x cubed over 3, and then this guy is going to be just plus 3x. Now remember, this one, we're not putting the plus c on the end. This is the one where we're going from 1 to 2. So this is the one where you have to plug the endpoints in. So the top endpoint goes in first, so the 2 goes in there first. So we would have 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3 plus 3 times 2 minus, and then we plug in the 1. So we would have 1 squared, or just 1, minus 1 third plus 3, right? It's nice when it's just a 1 like that. Okie dokie, now we can do some simplifying. So there we have four. This is gonna be minus eight thirds plus six. Over here we have a minus one. We have a plus one third, yes, and a minus three. All right, distributing in. I should use my equal signs. So combining here, the 4 plus the 6, 10 minus 1 minus 3 puts us back to 6, doesn't it? So we have 6, and then we have minus 7 thirds. Now 6 could be written as 18 thirds minus 7 thirds is 11 thirds. So what we were looking at was this area. It's just a little slice of area, right, like this. From one to two between those two graphs. So the area of that little slice is equal to 11 thirds. So again, the antiderivative part, that the, the um, definite integral, that's, that's not new for you. The only thing that's new is the setup. And once you get the setup correct, then the rest of it falls into place. Okay, so let's look at a different one. 
Oh, that's. Let me find another example. Oh, like the one I have. Here we go. Find the area of the bounded region. of f of x equals x and g of x equals 2 minus x squared. This one's a little bit trickier. On this one, they've given us the two functions just like they did before, but what they didn't give us was the endpoints. And the reason why is because this says it wants the bounded region, which what that kind of means to me is that when we put these two functions on a graph, there's gonna be some sort of bounded space. There's gonna be some sort of shape that this forms. And we're interested in that area. So again, doesn't need to be a perfect graph, but a sketch definitely needs to get going on here. So the first, that is an X, not a Y. The first function is just x, which is just our basic diagonal line. Okay, so there's f of x. Now, the second function is a parabola with a negative on it, so it's upside down parabola, and it's up two. So we got a parabola that looks like that. And that's g of x. So now as I step back and I look at that, do you see that the two graphs create a bounded region? There's an actual enclosed region there. So that is the region that we're looking for. But there's a problem with it in that they didn't give us this endpoint or this endpoint. Now, in some cases, you can kind of see what the answer actually is and you can figure it out. But if you can't, or your sketch isn't very good, or you, know, you don't really know what the graph looks like, then we've got a little bit more work to do. So we need to find endpoints. And in order to find endpoints, what we're looking for is where f of x and g of x intersect each other. So we want where f of x and g of x are the same, or f of x equals g of x. Which means that we're gonna take our two functions, so we're gonna take x and set it equal to two minus x squared. And we need to solve this guy. Now, it's been a while, but this is a quadratic, isn't it? So we wanna move everything over, get it set equal to zero, so if we move that over, it'll be positive x squared, plus x, that'll be a minus two equals zero. And when you're doing this, the hope is the thing definitely is easy if it factors. So we have x, and we'll go with a plus two and an x minus one. So in the end, x equals negative two or positive one. Excuse me. So what they're saying is that this point here must be negative two, and this point here must be one. And no matter what my graph looks like, those are the two endpoints. So again, I've read myself out of space. Um, yeah, I'll do it right here. Okay. So we're gonna have our integral, and we're gonna go from negative two to positive one. Now think about this though. When we go to do the subtraction in here, the top function has to be written first. So which function is above? In our case, it's the g of x, right? The g of x is over the f of x. So we're gonna write g of x first, two minus x squared, minus f of x, so minus x, dx. The order definitely matters. It's gonna make a difference if we do it the wrong way. Okay? So order definitely matters there. Now again, we've got just a nice parabola, so let's see, or parabola, I'm sorry, quadra it is a parabola, but a quadratic, so we can just go ahead and um, work right through there with our antiderivative. So the antiderivative of two is two x. 
minus, there we'll have x cubed over 3. And here we'll have minus x squared over 2. And remember, we need to go from negative 2.